Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining me as usual is the health coach at Life Enthusiast, Martin Patella. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? Good day, Scott. And today, I am so proud and so excited to announce Ken Campbell. Ken has been our supplier of a product line that we called Freedom Functional Foods. And uh, we're getting uh, phenomenal results from phenomenal products. And Ken comes to us with a wonderful pedigree of knowledge. He's actually started in the agriculture. He, he was developing animal feed, but turned out that the animal feed was also excellent for humans. And for that reason, we ended up with the product. Um, Ken Campbell, applause and Bows to the east. Oh, <laughs> thanks very much, Martin. Yes. Ken, uh, w in our earlier conversation not long ago, we started talking about whether I should be promoting calcium to people. It was like I said, okay, people, here's my coral calcium, buy it. And you said, don't you know about biodynamic transmutations? And I said, yes, Ken, I know about transmutations, but the public doesn't. We need to explain to them. And so that led to this short statement, which is something like this. It is known that we are not what we eat. We are actually more of what we absorb and assimilate. And then you said... Transmutate. Transmutate. And the enzymes. Right. And, and all the other wonderful things that, that you have there, Martin. Right. So what I would like to do is if you could try to explain to the public in, in a sort of simplified language of what happens in the gut when it comes to the assimilation of things. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to back up just a little bit. Uh, sure. The first organ in the body to start to die is the intestine. And of course, 80% of the problems that are out there can be solved by just getting a healthy intestine. And the intestine, of course, is the organ that is going to get nutrients in, toxins out, and of course, it's going to house the different uh, microflora that, of course, produce other enzymes, proteins, and molecules that are necessary for the body. Right. Well, specifics. What does it actually really mean? How does it actually work? The, the transmutations? Well, no, the, the gut, you know, like, okay, we need to, let's just say that I'm going to eat something. I'll eat a salad with a piece of chicken and uh, some rice or whatever. Okay. Uh, well, with the body, uh, every organ speaks to the intestine chemically saying, okay, we need more of these uh, proteins, molecules, minerals, and uh, that uh, our second brain is really our intestine. And what we're trying to do, uh, I mean, we can try to think through, well, the do's and don'ts of what to eat, but it's very important to have that communication or understand the communication. And when that organ is dying, uh, the messages don't always get across. And uh, quite often I see, you know, people literally digging their grave with their teeth with the wrong food that they're, they're eating. So <clears throat> when we're getting into absorption, of course, uh, within the intestine, there's uh, different pH. There's different uh, areas in the uh, intestine where different things are absorbed. And where, of course, other organs are looking at replenishing the, the, the water and uh, putting uh, the different digestible nutrients there to, to be able to make sure that the, uh, the body is going to be able to get um, the, the other products that you, eat, you have eaten, whether it's the salads or the proteins, the meats. All right. So for a person who finds themselves in a corner with some, I call it leaky gut, autoimmune disorders, uh, allergic reactions, who knows what, 
Mm-hmm. Now what, right? What what do we do? Like, well, we the intestine needs to heal itself. Okay, how and does it do that? and uh, within the barley gold, that is the very first organ that it starts to heal. So it uh, starts supplying uh, the different minerals that are necessary for the the peristaltic movement within the intestine, but also the en- enzymes and the proteins. Uh, there's 25 different uh, proteins and uh, 21, 22, it all depends on who you're talking to, they, they call essential proteins. Uh, the barley has all of the proteins, okay? And uh, <clears throat> when we had it tested, as far as the enzymes were concerned, uh, all of the different enzymes that we tested, needless to say, we didn't test 4,000. But uh, we're right off the charts. And by off the charts, you mean if you compare the uh, barley gold gold protein powder to a what? Okay, Uh, let's take uh, superoxide dismutase, for example. Uh, Superoxide dismutase is the immune system of the plant, if you like. It also can be absorbed uh, into our bodies and uh, aids in as an antioxidant in repelling disease and and, and that within ourselves. If you look at antioxidants, there's a a pyramid, if you like, a hierarchy, and superoxide dismutase is right on top. So if any of the other antioxidants have discharged the electrons uh, on free radicals or um, other organisms that shouldn't be there, uh, superoxide, superoxide dismutase will replenish that electron. Now, uh, with superoxide dismutase, like within plants, okay, when you go and pick uh, or any part of a plant, within 10 minutes, you lose 80% of your superoxide dismutase. What I had done, I had gone out uh, to the health food stores and I bought every bottle of superoxide dismutase that. Uh, a brand that they had. And in doing the test, it's a very simple test to determine superoxide dismutase. That's the use of hydrogen peroxide. And then, of course, the concentration of your hydrogen peroxide determines the level of superoxide dismutase. With all the varieties, I was using industrial grade superoxide dismutase. That was at a 42%. Very dangerous stuff. And all you're looking for is an effervescent reaction within the product. And the the barley gold at a pharmaceutical grade had a massive effervescence. Okay. Okay. Now, the one other test that you have to look at is that glutenase also reacts with superoxide dismutase. But if you take the product, you put it in an oven. Okay. For oh five ten minutes at 130 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, superoxide dismutase is destroyed. Glutenase is not. And when we did hey, that, hold on, hold on. We need to we need to uh, explain something because this has got so technical that that most ordinary people would just uh, we would lose them here. I, okay. I think I think you misspoke when you said that you were using 42 percent industrial strength. That was the the product, right? Yes. Okay, and and so the glutenase that's an enzyme that would that would what lies the it, gluten? It, it, yes, it's from uh, gluten. It's uh, part of gluten, but it will right. also break down gluten. Right. Okay. That's the idea. Yes. And so okay. so so the breaking down of gluten is usually challenged in most people, right? Well, yes, and like with most animal feeds, they use amylase and glutenase to break down the gluten and the amino pectins Starch, and yeah. the other carbohydrates and starches, okay? Mm-hmm. But glutenase is it's unaffected by heat. Superoxide dismutase breaks down very quickly. Okay. And naturally, just in the air, you will lose 80% of your superoxide dismutase. Okay. Um, that the within the barley gold, uh, in testing the 
superoxide dismutase, it maintains itself like two, three years. And there, there's still that effervescent effect, okay? So we know that we have a very, very high uh, amount of superoxide dismutase. And because that is, I guess, the most fragile uh, of the enzymes and antioxide, antioxidants, yeah. um, we know that the other 4,000 are also extremely high. All right. So what we're trying to say here is that the product, for other reasons than uh, that the technological advantages that you have employed in making it, will retain a whole lot of its enzymatic activity, unlike other things that you might buy, right? Yeah. Now, one interesting thing when we were doing the test, Martin, was that um, when they tested seeds that had not gone through the GEM process and nutrient stabilization, uh, they found that the enzyme levels, especially the, the glutenase and the amylase, did really not change. And um, it's a, scientist, a scientific fact that in adding those enzymes, you're able to break down seeds. So in nutritional analysis, like when they're feeding chickens or uh, pigs or cattle or whatever, it's been proven that there is a significant effect by adding these enzymes to the actual production. However, okay. after testing ours, there was no significant change on specifically the glutenase and the amylase. And in talking to the other scientists, I said, well, look at, uh, could we not be having the other 4,000 or the other 3,998 enzymes working together? I mean, plants do not germinate to digest themselves. They're germinating to grow. So there's a ratio of all these other enzymes there. And that's what's occurred within the barley gold. So it's it's a it's a very democratic uh, absorption of nutrients and mm -hmm. uh, assimilation of the the different minerals and the compounds necessary to to heal the body. All right. So the bottom line of this whole complicated statement really is that the barley gold is more absorbable than other things because you have seen the tests on the chickens and humans that that show us that, that you get more oh, out yes. of it. Yes. In fact, uh, the digestibility of the barley gold is running at about 97%. Uh, the highest that they've been able to get uh, just using their, their normal procedures is 53%, and that's with cattle. That's with animals that have four stomachs. So right. uh, we're just about double uh, with those animals. Well, as soon as you start looking at the digestibility for humans, you know, again, we're, we're way up there. So that's an interesting point because when you look at the label of the product, the label doesn't really tell the story because on the label exactly. you're, dis you're disclosing what the uh, Western scientific mind thinks. And then, but it doesn't understand what really happens. And, and that's why we put the second uh, chart on the label there, Martin, showing the difference between uh, barley that's gone through the uh, nutrient stabilization and regular barley. In fact, that part of the label, I have spent over $350,000. And um, it, it originally, uh, when it was out on the shelves and that, I did get a call from Health Canada. They told me that I had to remove that label, that part of the label. And uh, I said, well, why is that? And they said, well, we can't uh, have you just do one test. And I said, well, how many tests would I have to do? And they said, well, you'd have to do at least 10. Each test costs about $1,400. And I said, well, this is the mean or the average of over 300 tests. They back down very quickly. So that is the true nutrient value differences that are there as soon as you look at that, that, short, uh, that small chart. 
Right. So when we tell people, oh, yeah, this, this represents 19 grams of protein, but it really is much more than that. Well, it's effective protein, Martin. So yeah. I could have something that is, okay, uh, like with soy or uh, pro uh, products like that, you're looking at close to 57%. But when you take the digestibility factor in there, you might be only be getting 20%. Uh, the number two barley has an effective uh, protein of 47%. Uh, I, you know, other products that have extremely high protein, uh, I'm able to match it just because of the digestibility of the barley gold. Right. If I remember right, even beef or chicken doesn't have 50%, right? No. It, well, yeah, it's right up there. That, right. That's for sure. Right. But, but it, okay. So <laughs> the point I wanted to then draw out of this is that uh, it's important to understand what you bring in and the quality of how it grows. Maybe what we could do is cover a bit of the distance of how you actually treat the seed and treat the soil and treat the uh, produce after it's grown, right? Like there are these four steps that, that you make that are quite significant in, in the quality of the result. Oh, exactly. And this is all happening in the background um, with uh, the quality of product that is actually there. Um, I, I guess where I'll, I'll first start is with the bushel weight, okay? And I'll also mention that all our processes, everything that we do is 100% organic. It's, it's not, I think the uh, definition of organic with uh, Health Canada or Agriculture Canada, somebody can label something organic that has 80% of the product organic. Ours mm -hmm. is 100%, okay? Right. Now, um, I, would, I would probably want to bring the word biodynamic into it because there, there's more to just organic, right? Like organic okay. simply means nature, right? But um, it, it, Again, you have to look at the definition of organic and with the different organic, uh, I guess, certification boards that yeah. they have. Uh, you can have a definition that's 10 pages long, you know, so uh, it, it come, goes back on the equipment that's used, you know, how long the land has not been uh, sprayed with chemicals, all of that, okay? Right. So all right. it gets complicated. Okay, well, let's go back to the bushel weight. Uh, okay. I guess to, to define it, a bushel weight is, bushel is a unit of volume. Correct. And so we're, we're actually looking at specific weight or density of the material that we find in it, right? It, exactly. So your standard bushel weights for barley, for example, run at 48 pounds. So within that volume that is there, uh, the overall potential is 48 pounds worth of proteins, minerals, etc. Right. The number one barley runs at around 55, 56 pounds per bushel. The number right. two barley will run up to 70 pound bushel weights, okay? Right. Now, now certainly, uh, okay, if we back up again to conventional or commercial barley, protein values will run at uh, eight to 10%. With my number one barley, I'm running at an effective 18% with the digestibility. With the number two barley, I'm running at 47%. So uh, as soon as we start talking blood types, like old blood types, they need high protein values. Diabetics need high protein values, like the yeah. number two barley. Yeah, we have talked uh, here a lot about metabolic types and that there are some people who yes. are naturally inclined to being vegetarians and naturally inclined to having higher ratio of uh, carbohydrates but many 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 people are needing to be on the opposite diet the uh, high fat 
high protein, essentially the diet that you just mentioned, the the hunters that that would yep. normally suffer on a farming diet. Yes, and and uh, a lot of people, you know, they look at the protein values and even the weights, and they say, "Oh, well, I need to progress to the number uh, two barley," right. and that isn't always the case. Uh, Number two barley, like for athletes, uh, someone that's working very, very hard is great. Certainly for men, even of the other blood types, once they have uh, used the number one, they've built up uh, their intestine in that, it is good. Uh, but the number two barley, it also builds muscle, okay? Mm -hmm. So, it, and this is where we're probably going to get into, you know, as far as the calcium and that. But what I've shown is that bone density, there's a direct relation between bone density and strength and stamina. And certainly uh, arthritis and a lot of those different debilitating diseases, whether it's uh, joint problems or uh, problems uh, like even with the heart. Uh, yeah, circulatory. So very, very important. Right. Yeah, the circulatory illness or the blood yes. pressure issues or... Or whatnot. Okay, so uh, let's let's talk about that a little bit. So, uh, I, I've been aware of the uh, biodynamic transmutation issues for yes. years, uh, having read the uh, articles uh, published by Louis Kervran long ago, where yes. I remember I remember this was done on horses. Horses, when they run they seem to convert the calcium that's inside their bones into free oxygen and, and uh, magnesium that goes into solution. That was actually a test that I had done, Martin. And uh, I, I hadn't read that Karan had done any. He very well could have been. But I had also um, done that test. And yeah. in running a race in a minute, minute and a half, an animal will lose 20% and it's bone density. And you look at the different races and that, you know, you hear about the animals breaking their leg or whatever. They finish the race, the jockey is pulling them up and slowing them down. Also, if you look at different workers' compensation problems where people have injured themselves, it's usually on overtime or towards the end of the day that a lot of these accidents happen. And um, the, uh, I like to say what, goes up the hill, can come down the hill, and as the body increases bone density, it's there for a reason. Uh, horses don't run for sport. They're trying to flee something. And uh, what the bones can be likened to is like an oxygen tank on a scuba diver. And right. when the calcium is reversed, you get oxygen, which we know uh, we're going to be needing, but also the magnesium. And the same parts per million that we were losing in calcium really showed up as magnesium. The oxygen was burned. But it's interesting what the magnesium does. It keeps the muscles from going into spasms. Right. And of course, yeah. let's, let's take a look. Okay, sorry. Let's take a look at that uh, calcium chart. It's kind okay. of exotic looking. So here is a interesting chart, which could make a head spin, but it actually shows, first of all, that there's calcium with its four different isotopes, calcium 40, 42, 43, and 44. That's on the right yes. side of the screen. Yes. It's important to understand that there are several isotopes of calcium in the body, and each of these isotopes is used in a different type of tissue. Like you have a different isotope used for your enamel in your tooth and different isotope for the calcium that's in your blood and different one for the bone, right? So, uh, so, so the, the major uh, ion of calcium that is uh, in the bones is the calcium 40, okay? Right. And uh, one, one big argument that, and I've had, and of course, the um, the dairy association they, they have problem with this because they're promoting milk. But we're mammals, and there is not any mammal after puberty that drinks milk. Right. Uh, it whatever diet 
uh, that animal is supposed to have, it, it does not include milk. And the, the milk products that are out there, first off, they're the wrong ions. But secondly, uh, you know, it's the wrong animal <laughs> that we're getting the milk from. And you, you're getting into homogenization and pasteurization and how all of that works. But soon as the wrong iron goes into the body, and what you see with a lot of di different arthritic patients is that there's calcium deposits in the, in the joints. Why would their bones be deteriorating and they be having problems, but they're trying to get rid of the calcium? Or you start, uh, you, you hear about kidney stones and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the wrong iron. So right. the body so, has to get calcium I guess, 40. I guess we should do a little bit of science and explain. So the calcium okay. is an element that has 20 protons and then has a variable number of neutrons in the nucleus. Yes. And so it's the total weight is either 40, 42, 43, or 44. So it would have 20 or 22 or 23 or 24 proton, uh, uh, neutrons added to the 20 protons in the nucleus. Correct. And, and uh, it, it will have, you know, corresponding electrons. Right. And essentially... With the, with the transmutations, what we're looking at, at is certainly as far as the proteins or the protons uh, being incorporated, but also the electrons. But usually what, what I go uh, with, I just look at the different ions. So, for example, if you look at magnesium, we've also got three different ions there. There's 24, 25, and 26. But... With the correct ion, 24, and you add that to oxygen, which you see there in the red. This is uh, 16. Right there. That's the one. Okay. The atomic weight of that is 16. Okay. So 24 plus 16 is equal to 40. Okay. Now, that reaction occurs when you have the right enzymes in your body or the right combination of enzymes in the body. So uh, the, the reverse then ends up happening uh, when you're needing uh, more oxygen or more magnesium. In fact, doctors, they recommend for people with arthritis to be, um, to be doing impacting type exercise. And essentially the body will rebuild the bones when you're Resting at night it takes the oxygen, and if you have the sufficient magnesium, the bones start to uh, get more dense. Yeah, strength. So what's interesting in this uh, chart as well is that you could also see that if you add Si, which is silicon and carbon, the C, Si28 plus carbon-12, you end up also of being able to make calcium out of it. Okay, so we were talking about being able to convert calcium into magnesium and oxygen when we need more yes. oxygen temporarily, and then pushing it back into the bone by reversing the flow, Max, magnesium plus oxygen can recombine and in the presence of the right enzymes, right? Correct. To, to turn and, and see back to calcium. And see, as soon as we're talking blood types, then we go to the far left and we look at the reaction of the sodium, okay? So uh, it, now sodium is 23, magnesium is 24. When uh, people have higher protein levels, they produce more acid. And of course, 23 to 24, it needs a hydrogen, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas individuals that would be on uh, a more vegetarian type diet, sodium, which is 23, plus oxygen, which is 16, is equal to 39, which is your potassium. Indeed. Okay. And, and, and so this is where not only, uh, I guess, the enzymes are so, so important, but also the mineralization that is going to be occurring 
within the intestine, and, and you alluded a little bit to it as far as the preconditioning, the growing of the seed, uh, working within the soils, and trying to get those really high bushel weights so that when somebody buys the product, it's, it's a superfood as far as total nutrients, but those are available. So to, um, to make it practical, or at least understandable, uh, the point is that all of these minerals need to be present and the necessary enzyme need to be present in the product for it to be uh, digestible and transmutable. Exactly. And the other thing that I'm hearing is if I need more calcium in my bones, eating calcium is not necessarily the answer. Uh, exactly. Totally. In fact, if you're an adult, if you're over 14 years of age, you shouldn't be drinking milk. Okay. But to get that correct uh, calcium ion, it's going to be making sure that the magnesium and the potassium is there. And of course, you know, you can complete this whole chemistry by the uh, the high quality salt, and that's not a commercialized salt product that would be being used. Right. Cool. So basically, what we're saying is is that we need all of these elements and and building blocks in our body. We need to be able to get them in the right amounts, and that's not happening. And our society is telling everybody, well, you need to have strong bones, so drink milk. Right. Right. Which is a and see, the other the thing, wrong thing to do. You know, on chemistry, chemistry says nothing is created nor destroyed. It's just a balance sheet. Okay. And as soon as you start getting into transmutations, you look at what Einstein said. Elements could be changed. Okay. Kervran took it that step forward and he looked at the bioenergetics, if you like, how every living organism can transmutate. Uh, different elements and that starts falling into ecosystems and what you need to be <coughs> excuse me um, well when you think about it we see that every day right I mean that's right it rains that goes on the ground and I've got grass in the ground and the thing grows six inches and I have to cut it so obviously the grass did something to something to cause it to grow it it transmuted and we see it when we see the leaves on the trees, we see it when our babies grow up. Uh, this transmutation is just a normal thing, which that our society is, uh, doesn't believe in alchemy, right? Well, and that's, that's what it is. It, it is uh, an alchemy. Now I'm not throwing chemistry out because your grass grows also if you add nitrogen fertilizer. It will grow six inches and all the rest. Okay. But, you know, you have to look. There, there's, there's. You just gave a, a chemistry lesson, Ken. <laughs> like it was, here's yeah, magnesium, here's salt, here's this. Like you mix them the right way and you get, you know, it's 24 plus 20. There you go. And you, you know, so, I mean, we're not, not arguing that science is actually showing us that alchemy is happening every second of every day, everywhere. It happens within e ecosystems, Scott. For example, yeah. I can take different plants and they will grow in high saline soils. Or I can take plants, certain plants will grow in soils that are toxic with, uh, uh, with copper or molybdenum or whatever. Okay, And it's just that is part of their genetic range. Okay, mm -hmm. So you have to look at whatever the organism is and look at the genetic range. The other bit of a curveball that gets thrown in there is are the uh, microbes, okay? Because the microbes can have a mutual beneficial or symbiotic relationship with different organisms. Other, uh, you know, bacteria and viruses, I mean, they, they kill. They, you know, there's molds, funguses. But again, what they're trying to do, they're, they're taking the weak part of the ecosystem out. So as soon as you start seeing disease occur or disability, let's, let's even include that, then the, the transmutations aren't working or the bacteria are moving in 
for the next phase, which is decomposition. Okay. So when you live in a society that thinks that every time you've got a cold, you need to take an antibiotic and destroy your gut and thinks that you need to put uh, all sorts of herbicides and pesticides on the plants that you're growing that you want to eat or you want to feed to the animals and uh, they don't believe in crop rotation, they don't believe in taking the, the stuff that, we, that goes through us and use it for fertilizer. I'm, in other words, putting the, the uh, plant, once it's been changed, back into the soil uh, in, called composting. Uh, we're, we're basically living without all of these enzymes. We're living without all of these materials that we need, these proteins, these uh, antioxidants. And then we wonder why we're sick. Yeah, I, I like to say you don't get a headache because of a Tylenol deficiency. Now, I don't mm -hmm. want to throw antibiotics out because they help immensely. And like even with herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, all of that, um, it, it's the overuse of it. Uh, I mean, the emergency department at the hospital is really nice when you have an accident. Painkillers, you know, they're nice when you're in severe pain. But when you're living on them or you're having to keep, continue go, to go back, that means that your ecosystem is out of balance and you've got to reconnect the dots. Uh, and, and I would go a step backwards from what you said, Ken. I totally agree with it. But, you know, how often does someone go and get an antibiotic because they really, really need it? And nobody says, uh, what do they say? Well, you know, have a little bit of yogurt or, you know, like we, we, we know that we have destroyed the ecosystem of our gut when we take the antibiotics, that's its job, but we don't know how to replace it. And I think what, what we're really talking about here with you and with the barley gold is that this is a way for us to replace a lot of the damage that's been done. It's like and, a clear cut of forest, but nobody's gone and planted trees. And we wonder why all the soil is running down when it rains. Well, but between that and, and even, uh, like the slogan of our company is awakening a new lifestyle. I talked about it earlier as far as ecosinoid metabolism. Most people don't understand that language. And it comes down to your health is whose responsibility? Yours. It's not the government's. It's not anybody else in your family. And it, the only people that you have to be responsible for uh, their health are, are people that are not capable of it, maybe your children, but we're not educated in this. So as we learn how the body ends up talking, then you will know that, gee whiz, I've got a headache, a couple of glasses of water will probably el eliminate that uh, headache. Or maybe it's something that has eaten, that you've eaten, and it's a reaction. We'll stay away from it. OK, and uh, the, the body can react one of four ways. I mean, you it, the food can come up the same way it went down. It can go through you like a freight train. You can be extremely lethargic. So it's no different than a hangover. Like the next day you're, you're feeling bad or if you've eaten food and it, you're just not yourself. Or the fourth thing that you're looking for is when the dopamines and endorphins kick in and the body rewards you. Yes, eat more of this, eat more of that. And consistently, like I will get calls back on barley and people on the barley gold and they will say, well, you know what, I just can't drink this many cups, the, the same number of cups of coffee that I used to, or I can't eat this much meat anymore. And that is the acosinoid metabolism moving in. And then, of course, you have to look at determining the difference between Allergic reactions uh, and, you know, other responses that can occur. I, I mean, we can do a whole talk on eicosanoid metabolism, Martin. I mean, it... We'll, <laughs> we'll, save, that, we'll save that for Let's another day. Let's save it for next, there you go. It for next time. I would like to actually try and uh, just come to a conclusion here. That's which, fair. Which uh, I would like to put it this way. We have had great experiences with the barley gold in the sense that when we 
uh, have people start on it, uh, we, we encourage them to start with smallish amounts, but increase yes. and uh, and watch what happens. And the most common report is, I feel better. Which I guess that's there, there's your indicator, right? And your your ta- uh, mention of the dopamine. I mean, there's your there's your signaling molecule of pleasure. Yes. Yeah. Well, and, right. and other things like we've got lots of testimonials, whether it's you know with arthritis or heart disease, liver, and you know intestinal problems, and each of these, of course, uh, require you know, possibly other uh, nutrients, okay, and different procedures to really get over that. But, you know, I always tell people, how many years has this taken you to get to this state? Uh, please don't expect me to straighten it around in 30 days or 60 days. And and the big thing is, uh, this is food. Uh, food you eat every day. Air you breathe every day. Water you drink every day. And as food, if you're not supplying your body with those building blocks, you start going down the slippery slope again. This is not something that a lot of people say, will it, you know, will it cure me? Well, no, it's food. Uh, This is something that your body needs. Just realize that. Yeah, this is an important point you're making, which is when we supply the body, with the necessities of life, it will automatically start building more health. Yeah, and and see, with with chemistry, okay, um, the second law of thermodynamics, or entropy, we're continually told everything goes to its most disorganized state. People go into the doctor, well, you're getting old, okay? But (laughs) believe it or not, we, we go against the second law of thermodynamics. And that's the life-giving force. That's the extra peak that we're able to move against that. I mean, most people, they have their heart on the left-hand side of their chest. Ears are on the side of their head. You're actually organized. Um, You don't wake up one morning and everything is all rearranged. Well, let's hope not anyway. But... um, the, to, to go to your uh, your main point there, Ken, which I think is a really good one to, to sign off on, is sometimes you may need a little more help. In other words, this is not yes. really a self-help uh, situation. It's a good it's idea a to find somebody bullet. who is an expert in their field or, in, in this case, in the field of health and talk to them and work with them. And that's one of the reasons why we always tell everybody You know, Martin is our health coach. If you've got a problem, before you go and buy a case of barley gold because you need it, which we all need it, you may need a few other things to go along with it. And the trick is to talk with Martin and find out what those things are because we spend a lot of our time eating food that is perfectly fine. It's organic. It's been grown the right way. But because of our metabolic type and the way our genetics are, and a few other things that are going on with us, it's really bad for us. So, you know, what we want to do in this this show is constantly open people's minds up to possibilities, to the amazing things that uh, entrepreneurs and manufacturers like yourself, Ken, are doing, and then say, you know, we want to bring it all back to, you need to talk to somebody who has spent hours and hours and hours uh, in the chemistry thinking part of this like Martin has because you two talk about all this high PhD level chemistry stuff and my head just goes spinning, but you understand exactly what's going on. And so that's why it's really important when you're listening to this and why we always give you a phone number and a URL at the end is so that you can take another step, which is the action step of talking to someone like Martin who can actually give you the information that you need to make the decisions that you need to make. And, uh, and so often I hear people say, well, I eat really well. And then I start asking a little bit, bit more about what they eat. And I say, you think that's good for you? You know? Uh, and I, I mean, I've had different people. I, I remember one guy, uh, he's going to start on the barley gold. I say, start on a half a teaspoon. And he says, I, I've been vegan for the last 
20 years. And he starts off with two heaping tablespoons. Well, he's in the hospital less than a week later, passing kidney stones like anything, okay? Like if you really want a story, yeah, start out on two heaping tablespoons and try to, I like I've had boils break out on people's bodies, pneumonia. Uh, they can't get out of bed. Ken, you're not doing a good job of selling barley gold when you tell No, no, us that. I'm just telling you, I'm agreeing with exactly what you said, Scott, and I said it at the beginning of the uh, interview, and Martin, with all these wonderful, other wonderful products, barley gold is not a, a silver bullet, okay? Yes. And I really hope that in the first 30 days, you notice nothing. But I do give a 90-day money-back guarantee. I'm not looking at a full bottle. I'm looking at it three months worth of empty bottles. You're the judge, jury, and executioner. If it doesn't work, if you don't see it, you get your money back. Okay? But I never said it was a silver bullet. That's right. Awesome. So thank you very much for joining us, Ken. We've come to the end of our time together today. And uh, Martin, if somebody listens uh, to me finally, actually that happens all the time, and calls you, uh, what would be the number that they should call you or how can they get a hold of you? Look at life-enthusiast.com. The uh, products are called Barley Gold. We have a special available for a three-pack. That's the 90 days that Ken mentioned. If you want questions answered, call me at 1-866-543-3388. Thank you very much for listening. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you, Ken, for sharing all of your knowledge. We hope to have you on again soon because uh, there's a whole bunch of other things that we need to talk about. And we really appreciate uh, you tuning in and watching or listening to our show. This has been the Life Enthusiast Online Radio or TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. See you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks.